Hi everyone, let's talk about Heaven and Ale, which is uh, one of Michael Kiesling's many, many games from Essen last year. This one's co-designed with Andreas Schmidt, and I have liked many uh, Michael Kiesling games in the past, uh, from solo ones that he designed, like Sansuchi, uh, I think Sealand was with another designer. Uh, he's designed many with Wolfgang Kramer, like the Palaces of Carrara or Porta Nigra, really, really fantastic games. Anyway, so yeah, you get the idea. I like uh, <laughs> I like his games. Uh, from I can't remember the, all the ones they released at Essen. Was it, it was Reworld with Michael Keasley, with, uh, he is Michael Keasling, with Wolfgang Kramer, and Azul was on his own. I didn't play that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe there was another one. But anyway, this one is my favourite from, uh, from those. Uh, I really, really enjoy this. It's definitely a real, real exercise in brain burning. Uh, and uh, yeah, a, a, a downside, let's start off with downside, shall we? Uh, straight away, it's, it's one of those games, Reworld is as well, actually. It's, it's a game where it's probably going to take you a few plays before you get a sense that you even know what you're doing. Like, I thought I was doing quite well in that playthrough. Spoilers if you just watched this, but you should watch the playthrough first. Uh, yeah, I thought I was doing pretty well in that. Obviously not. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of those where it's really going to take you a while to get into the rhythm of it. The scoring doesn't help that. I don't... I really like the system. It is definitely... Uh, clunky and hard to explain, which is why I didn't even attempt it before I was actually doing it at the end of the playthrough. But in spite of that, I, I really, really like it. It's really, really interesting. And it's kind of a simple thing. That that, that is your focus. You, uh, you need money. You need to work on the, on the shady side of your field to get the money to actually get the stuff on the sunny side and give you all of these points, get, get those markers moving. And as well as uh, you need to try and move them not equally, but you know you can't just focus on one of them and leave the rest on the starting spaces, and you can't just ignore the brewmaster as well. If he doesn't even get past that one space into the four to one uh, area, if he doesn't even get there, you get no points for any of it. So you need to move him a bit. You can't just uh, you can't just fill up all of your spaces with twenty four plus sheds that don't move him at all. You need to get him uh, moving a little bit. And the the further you move him, the better the exchange rate is for bringing all the other resources resource markers back. And the, the more points you can get in that way and the multiplication is more. So maybe you wouldn't have had to move them to bigger numbers because the, the points you get will be multiplied even more. Then there's a race for the barrels as well, which uh, a little bit, I think uh, Rado mentioned this uh, well in, the re in his Reworld video, where all of these different scoring things are available every game. There's a lot to kind of take in and in a two player game kind of, well, I can, I can concentrate on these things and you can concentrate on these things and we'll, we'll probably end up competing on a couple of them or we'll be trying to, we'll spot what the other one's going for and maybe try and deny it. But in general, there's kind of enough to go around. It would be nice if there were fewer of them, you know, in each game. But as it is, it's a nice thing to race against. And yeah, just the time track system, the time track kind of system where, you know, you can move as many spaces as you want, but then in the, in the future, I can just kind of, you know, the round doesn't end until I get to the end space as well. So I can kind of get all of the spaces one by one that you skipped if I want to, if I'm not really desperate for anything. But then inevitably, there's going to be something that you really need. You really need that, that last scoring disc that's out. And you're going to have to miss all of these brilliant tiles. But it's just going to have to happen because uh, you, you really need to score this thing or your whole thing has been wasted. It's a really nice system. It's worked really well in games uh, like uh, Matthias Kramer's Glenmore or Kraftwagen. He used it in a different way in that as well. I really, really like the system and it works really nicely here, especially when uh, spaces can get multiple tiles on them. And, you know, if you skip them in a previous round, they still get another tile put on them in the next round. So you might end up you know, r really having an attractive tile because you could spend one turn, if you've got the money for it, getting loads of tiles in one big go. I really like that as well. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, yeah, the, the negative point that I've kind of already mentioned, they aren't really very big ones for me. Uh, yeah, the, the, the theme, not really bothered about, uh, yeah, it doesn't really attract me in any way or put me off. It's just, it's just there. It's, it's kind of a quirky little thing that we're doing, uh, brewing this beer. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take you a few games. I am definitely, yeah, yeah I've, I've only played it a few times and I am definitely nowhere approaching comfortable with uh, with a strategy in it but 
yeah, I, I really, really enjoy the game. It's it's a very, very puzzly, thinky thing of, you know, you're, you're trying to balance out all of, I, I said it a load of times in the playthrough, you're trying to work out the best time to be doing things. You know, it seems like a waste scoring things earlier on or trying to get certain barrels really early on, but maybe it's for the better. You know, you're going to have to put some of those scoring discs out. The sooner you do that, the sooner you can get some of your privilege cards out. And then later in the game, you might be kicking yourself, why did I score water in the first round when now I've got, this ridiculous number of water tiles and they're all in the sunny side where they would all move the water marker out that's still on my starting space and yeah I'd like like an idiot i just did it for the five money in the first round but that's something that yeah multiple games are going to end up uh, you know educating you on what the best strategy is but yeah i think it's a really great game heaven and ale and that's it from me thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you for the next game bye